Hello everybody and welcome. We're going to work on guides, grids. Uh, we're going to extend our canvas. So we're, it's going to be kind of experimental. Plus we're going to fix this image a little nicer. This just happens to be an image on Crab Orchard Lake in southern Illinois. And uh, the sky is a little dark. The horizon's a little dark there. Some of this is a little bit dark too. Uh, we're going to fix that up. It's not a stellar image by any uh, stretch the imagination, but it's an okay image. So I'm just going to uh, create a copy of this, Control J, Command J on a Macintosh. And here I'm going to just go up here and click on Brightness Contrast. I want to go with the, a simple fix on this one. So I'm just going to run the brightness up until this looks good. Yes, this. Not this, not this, but this. So <clears throat> I'm raising it up quite a bit. It's okay. And I'll close it. Now the great thing about doing a brightness contrast through an adjustment panel is that we get the automatic mask on here. Instead of having to go down here and click on the square donut and get a quick mask, we have it built in. So the beauty of this is uh, right now the woods back here looks pretty good. Now the sky in many areas and the water are somewhat blown out. So what I'm going to do uh, this time instead of uh, my usual painting with another color right here in the middle, I'm going to start by filling this mask with black. Well, black is right now our, our background color. So to fill with the background color, you hold down the control or the command on a Mac and hit the backspace key. And you notice now the mask is completely black. So what we're going to do now is paint with white on this mask to bring out what we do want to see better. We know we had this in here looking pretty good until we did this. So I'm going to paint with the regular paintbrush and make my brush smaller and just paint through here and notice my opacity has turned down quite a bit. I can raise that up just a little bit so this will go a little bit faster. So I'm painting that back in and some of the reflection too and you look in the mask and you can see exactly what's going on we've got a white streak going across there now and we've got some areas of the sky that are just really really dark so we're going to fix that up as well I'm gonna go ahead make sure I've got this in the middle where I want it and I think we've gotten it all the way back to the way we had it. Let's just make sure. Now, let's go back to, let's say, 30, 29, somewhere in there. <clears throat> make the brush smaller. Make sure that the brush is soft. Nice big softness to it. The size could be bit bigger. So I'm going to paint right now on the mask with white and just bring the lightness through here a little bit and here and let's kind of lighten up some of this. Just, you know, a little bit. I want it looking too dark. Maybe right here a little bit. Brought down a guideline. That was interesting. Switch to the move tool. And I'm going to turn the rulers off so I don't get that anymore. Back to the brush. <clears throat> right in here maybe a little bit. And maybe a little bit more right there. Alright, things are looking much better now. 
and if we turn those things off you can see quite a bit of difference we can certainly fine-tune this we can do some more we can do some color corrections we can intensify things uh, but the main purpose of this was to show you reversing the mask and painting with white and now we're going to create additional canvas to put a name card in basically uh, so here we go I'm gonna make this smaller so all we gotta do is a command minus or control minus on a PC and I need some notice up here I didn't get that corner very good let's go to 100% make sure that's brought back okay so I'm going to create some additional canvas uh, because I want to put in right down here uh, photography by Steve McLaughlin or photo by whatever we want to have and there's no room to put that unless I put it right on the image and, and we don't really want to do that so I'm going to turn my rulers on and that's done with a command or control R and now we can drag out rulers all we want to now what I want to do is basically uh, add some space all the way around the image now I'm going to do that first of all by let me make this a little bit bigger if I can oh, filled it up okay I'm going to decide right now I, I think I want maybe a half inch all the way around so if I put a half over here and a half over here yes that gives me an inch that I'm increasing the size of this I'm gonna put a half inch at the top and probably a full inch at the bottom so here's what we need to do we're gonna drag a guide out from the side and add that extra half inch same at the top we look over there on the left hand side and drop that at the half inch same over here and I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna make this probably a full inch let's see we're at eight inches so let's make this nine <clears throat> actually I'm gonna make it nine and a half I want that space in there so I'm gonna go ahead and put one here just for hoots now I can go ahead while I'm at it and determine what the center of this image is if I need to so I'm gonna say yes I, I need to do that for now so if I drag a guide out of the left side and drag it across notice it jumps right in there it kinda wants to stick that's the exact center of the image so if I drag one down from the top there it went right there so this is the center point of the entire image good for future reference if nothing else okay now about creating that additional canvas we just go to the crop tool just press the letter C if you would like and just drag out over to where the guides are and notice now over here in the layers palette you see we have another layer it says background and crop preview so I like the size of this I'm gonna go ahead and just push enter press enter and look at what we have now so we we have pretty even space now some people create things like this to uh, put in picture frames instead of putting mats over them and uh, I think as this develops you'll see more uh, where I'm going with that you see also on the mask up here that we did when we did the brightness turn that off so you can see uh, it you can also see that it extended the canvas even on this mask so all three layers here have the extended mask on it now you can do this let me, let me just show you I'm going to do file new and just create a, a regular canvas let's just put this on inches and 8 by 10 150 and, and click OK <coughs> excuse me if I want to make this a bigger image I'm working along and I decide I don't have enough image here 
uh, let's just turn on a paintbrush and paint a little bit so this is our regular canvas and I decided I need more room to creatively paint so I can just again press the uh, crop tool and make additional space to work in and the, the more traditional way of increasing the camp canvas is to go to image image size uh, let's before I do that let's just paint here so you can see that we are making the canvas bigger instead of just magnifying the size of this so traditionally we would go to image canvas size and let's say we want to create additional image over here on this left hand side we would click on this right arrow which shows it's going to create additional space right here let's make this like 14 inches wide and it's going to put the additional inches over here on the left and click OK and there you see we have brand new canvas space so this is the more traditional way of creating uh, extra space but certainly uh, using the crop tool is a fast way and see it on the fly just how much new canvas that you have okay so we've got all of these guides set up we can also fine-tune it even more which can really be very helpful you can go to view and show grid we've got the guides smart guides pixel grids uh, so let's turn on the grid so now you see here we are here's dead center of the image <clears throat> And then we have this all evenly segmented all the way across. Across, not across. Uh, the nice thing about this is right now I'm wanting to put a box in here that will allow me to put photography by Steve McLaughlin. So I can pretty much tell uh, where that should go, how far uh, I want it, where it can start, where it can end, so forth. So it's even. You see here on this end, you got two little boxes, two little boxes before the larger boxes start. You've got four boxes in each one of these segments. So if we go, and here's where I'm going to use uh, something a little bit different. There's a couple ways we can go. Uh, we can turn on a marquee tool, and I suggest heavily that we create a new layer to do this. And we can just go, let's say, right here and click and drag to here. And we've got an even selection either side, right? One, two, three and a half. One, two, three and a half. And we've got one box down, one box up over here. So that's even as it can go. So we can fill a box and put it in here with white. So if I hold down my control key and press backspace, I can actually fill this selection, which I just undid, with white. Now you can't really see that it's there too well, so I put a little drop shadow on it so you can see it. And then we can go ahead and type in uh, the name. So I'm turn on the text tool or press the letter T and photography. And notice I've got this Kunstler script. So I've got my little bit of information right there. I'm just going to click on the move tool to finalize that. And notice it snapped right there so we know that's dead center now it's pretty tiny so we just do a control T and we can hold down the shift key to bring it out evenly and we can move that down still staying on the center and then just hit enter or double click now with the white 
we can actually go back here to where it says drop shadow double click on that and turn that off and then let's click on inner shadow so it looks like it's in set and then when we can control the distance and the softness of that and so you have this little placard effect going on let me make this bigger so you can more appreciate it so this is what uh, some photographers do uh, instead of mounting uh, and having matte board cut they will make it part of the photograph and just insert uh, this box the other way of doing it would be to just go over here to the uh, custom shape tool and you can put you know the rectangle shape in and pretty much do the same thing notice the fill color is white and over here we have the rectangle so you can do it this way or do it the way we previously did and if we do use the uh, custom shape tool to put that in we can also just go down here to special effects and click that and bring up the blending options and you can certainly do the inner shadow uh, effect here as well and we got to turn that on create a little distance soften it up so either way uh, I sometimes think this is the easier way to go uh, but right now we're off a little bit so here's what I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna bring bring back that pixel grid first of all so I go to view and down to show and grid and you see how off we are with this box this is right on uh, the second line and this one's way over the second line so uh, we need to basically uh, change the width of this side and we just do that like the other things that we transform we do a control T or command T on a Macintosh brings up the bounding box and we just simply drag this in and you can see the whole window with the effect uh, moving for us and then we can just hit enter or double click inside the bounding box turn on our font and let's turn the grid off let's actually turn off all of those things so we can go to view and uncheck the extras and let's make this bigger control zero command zero on a Mac and there's one view let's make it even bigger so we can view this down here that looks pretty neat you know and you obviously are free to put any kind of font style you want in that to kind of make it your own but it's just an idea something that some people do uh, especially if you're doing a card you know sending cards to folks you can put that inside the box as well just best wishes thinking of you whatever also don't forget we can uh, go into the control panel on the special effects the FX double click that and we can go to bevel and emboss click up here to technique chisel chisel hard uh, we can change the depth of this a little bit let's go down here and experiment a little bit see what if we can find something that makes that look a little neater all these uh, have a slightly different thing to add Let's change the size of that now it's coming out instead of going in so let's uh, now that looks a little bit better we got the shadow back there again we're coming out so you got to be careful about that you don't want it raised looking let's go down now remember if you don't have all of these uh, that you see here in this box you always just 
click on the little gear and there's lots here uh, that you can do let's see here that doesn't look bad Again, we're getting the outer thing going on that one doesn't look too bad that wouldn't be bad if it wasn't darker but you get the idea I don't want to belabor this back up to the top and I'm gonna settle for that click OK and do a control or a command zero to fill the screen so wrapping this up you see that uh, we've got a lot of control over the placement and measuring of things uh, let me show you one other thing that we can do in our image that really can come in handy I'm gonna go back uh, turn on part of these let's see let's go to show uh, let's do extras and I'm gonna turn go back in and turn the grid off so show grid and check that I want to show you that we can measure things if you want to bring something specific in and put it in a specific place in your image uh, here's the way to do it remember I said uh, we have lots of things under the eyedropper I've mentioned that before well, one of those things is the ruler tool so if we click it we can measure uh, let's say we want something to be three inches or let's say we want it on this side so this is roughly uh, five and a half inches to the middle so let's say we want to put something uh, at the seven inch mark so we can uh, now this is the middle mark so if we click now let's hold the shift key down so we can get a nice straight line when we measure this if we go over here now look up here in the top right here width shows you exactly where we are so I'm gonna click again I'm gonna go right over here to the left click and hold my shift key down and you see up there right now we're just barely over eight inches so if I say I want it seven inch mark I just click and drag that back that's pretty close this is very sensitive so I can actually go over here and drop a guide and there's where it would uh, basically intersect uh, is right right in here so we can have exact placement of everything so if we turn this on we could have measured how far from here this actually is holding down the shift key so you look up there and it's almost uh, right on uh, two inches and then we go over here and measure from here to where that box is and you know inch and a half there let's do that again over here measure here to there yeah that, that makes more sense inch and a half to inch and a half so you see we've we there's a lots of things we can do for exact placement uh, to extend things uh, for instance let's make this control minus this for a second a couple of times uh, let's say we want to add a matte color for example so we can just go in here and whoops sorry about that control escape I'm sorry yeah and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna drag out a grid at one inch over here put a grid uh, marker down guide marker one inch all the way around and one down here and I can click on my re uh, rectangular marquee tool come right down here and notice I can't do anything because my image is only here to there so what I need to do is again click on the crop tool and drag to this area that we just measured and extends the canvas again now we have these other guides so all I have to do now is turn on the yes I want to crop sorry about that and 
turn on the uh, rectangular marquee tool, click here, drag down to that guide. We have an exact selection. Now this time we want to select from here to the outer edge, not things that are inside. So what we do is go select inverse or shift control I and now just this part is selected. So let's say that we want to uh, select a com complementary color to play off the image. We can go with some a color that's down here, a color that's in the sky. Uh, let's just do uh, go here real quick and and uh, get the eyedropper or press the letter I. And let's say we want a color that's right in there. And so we hold down the Alt key and hit Backspace. That fills it with the foreground color. Control Backspace fills it with the background. And Alt or Option key on a Mac plus Backspace fills with the foreground color. So let's get on an empty layer. So I'm going to create a new layer here. I'm going to put it on top and Alt Backspace or Option Backspace. So Let's go up here and turn off the extras so you can actually see. Well, it doesn't really, you know, work that well for me, but you get the idea. Now, what I'm going to do instead is find the complementary color from off of the image. And to do that, I'm going to go up to Window, and I want Extensions and I want to use the cooler K-U-L-E-R. Now with this turned on, it takes a second or two, make sure that yours looks like this. You basically want to uh, click on complementary under select rule complementary and I'm going to just uh, let's see, let's click down there just to see if my color is blue, you see across from blue is yellow. That's the complementary color. So let's try yellow out here instead of the blue. So over here in the Layers palette, we have this Layers 3. Hold down your Control key on a, a PC, Command key on a Mac, and Shift click that, or Control click that, and that loads it again as a selection. Now this time, let's find this particular yellow. Let's go down here, and it's pointing to this yellow. So double-click that, and now our color picker says here's the yellow. So let's do Alt or Option Backspace. And let's get on the right place here. Control D. And I think that looks a lot better but what if we just tone that down a little bit? Let's make that a lot lighter. So we can come over here. Actually, let's click on the color picker. Double click it. And let's go way lighter. Let's go over to there. And now again, let's con control click on layer 3. Command click if you're on a Mac. And let's fill with this color this lighter yellow by doing alt or option click backspace control D and now let's kinda of close this up make this bigger and we kinda of kill two birds with one stone in a way of uh, in one way of thinking because this this color also plays off of the the grass that's in here now the other thing is, are these weeds. We could have actually uh, put the eyedropper on the weeds and let's control click on the layer again to fill that. Alt click. So now we're playing off the color that's in the weeds. So you have several different ways to try to find that complementary color and make it work. Now remember this is on its own layer so if we want to and we should I think create a little bit of depth there separation to really look like a matte board 
So we just go to the FX and click on Drop Shadow, or let's just double click right here and go to Drop Shadow. We're on the right layer, so let's just kind of drag that out a little bit. Just click and drag it out. Let's click on Size to cause a little separation and drop the intensity maybe a little bit. And there you have it. We've got some separation between the matte board and the picture and then we have a cutout which has our signature or our photography by so hopefully this gives you some ideas we've come a little ways we've done several things here we've used the guides the grids we've created extra canvas space to work in um, we used the cooler we extended the canvas once again to to build our mat board and we found the cooler to use the complementary colors and experimented there. So hopefully this helps you out. Uh, hopefully you can find a good use for it. And I will talk to you all later. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.